Hello, Fox. Welcome back to the Mac One One Tutorial Three. In the first tutorial, we were focusing on the proposition logic. Last tutorial, interpretive helped you with the questions about the proposition logic and the rules of inference. I hope you guys are comfortable with our ways of teaching. After two weeks of learning, I think you are already familiar with the proposition logic. And you should script the tips of the iceberg of the discrete mathematics. In last week's lecture, you are introduced to the predicates and quantifiers. So in this video, I will show you some examples of how to use the quantifier properly. Let's move on to the questions. Question one says, consider the universe of all polygons with three or four sides and define the following predicates for this universe. And the question asks you to translate each of the following statements into an English sentence and determine whether the statement is true or false. Um, as we learned in the last two weeks, we know uh, when you ask to translate a statement, a symbolic notation into the English sentence, you should find the logic connected first, right? What do we have here? We have X or the inclusive or. What the inclusive or statement means? Um, it means only one of the statement is true. Not both or none of them is true at the same time. And this week, uh, we introduced the quantifier. So after you find the logic connectives. The next step is find the um, quantifier. What do we have here? We have a uh, universal quantifier. What the universal quantifier means? Universal quantifier is like for all, every, every variable in the universe. And then we should look at the statement, like what the QX is and what's the tx is. We have qx here, x is a quadrilateral, and tx, x is triangle. So let's write down it in an English sentence. We have, uh, sorry, we have every, it's a universal quantifier, every. We have every polygon. Every polygon is a quadrilateral, or a triangle, but not both, right? It's the quadrilateral is QX, triangle is TX, but not both. It's or, but not both, it's the X or, right? We have universal quantifier here, QX, TX, then the X or, connect the statement using the logic connective x or and the question has two tasks the first one is sorry the first one is write the statement into a english sentence and the text second statement uh, second task is um determine the statement is true or false right so what's the truth value of the statement of this statement the statement should be true, right? Because um, polygon can um, can be a uh, polygon can't be quadratic, uh, quadrilateral, and triangle at the same time. And in this universe, we only have the triangle and quadrilateral. So the statement should be true, right? Or I used to write. Why the pen here? Cool. So the statement B. Similarly, we need to find the logic connective first. We have and. We have and here. It's the conjunct uh, conjunctive statement. And we have um, extensional quantifier exist x. 
Existential, uh, existential quantifier means um, for uh, there exist or there have some some variable x in the universe. Um, so what the tx means, tx x is the triangle and what's the px, px here, x has an interior angle that actually 180 degrees. So, oh, sorry, sorry. What this in the English? We have um, there exist there exists, right? We have existential quantifier here. There exists a triangle with an interior angle that exceeds 180 degree. And then the next step is to predicate the statement is true or false. Obviously, this statement is false. Right, because no triangle can have an interior angle greater uh, greater than 180 degree, right? So this statement should be false. Uh, statement C. Here we have N is a conjunction, uh, conjunction, and we have negation here. Um, so um, we firstly we need to negate the statement r r x, then um, apply the n the conjunctive statement. We have the what's the quantifier? It's the existential quantifier. And what's the r is r means x is a rectangle. So um, let's write down the statement. We have zero exists exists a quadrilateral which is not a rectangle what the truth value of the statement this statement should be true right because um, this statement is true as quadrilateral can not be a triangle for any x, right? What is the truth value of this statement? This statement should be true because we um, because we have parallelogram is a quadrilateral but not a rectangle. So, so the statement should be true. Let's move forward. We have the statement D. Here we have an implication and the universal quantifier for x. Let's have a look what the x, uh, hx is. hx means all sides of x are equal. And the ex here, ex, ex means it's a equilateral triangle. So let's write the statement in the English sentence. We have mm, we have if so for the implication we put the if then first, right? And so, if so, so what's the next step? Next step, we should um, write down the quantifier. We have a universal quantifier here. So, if all, right, it's the universal quantifier. If all, um, if all sides of a polygon are equal, then the polygon is an um, equilateral triangle then the polygon 
that polygon is an equilateral, equilateral triangle. The statement is false. Since the, um, the, the assumption is only true of the polygon, if the polygon is a triangle. But in the universe, we have quadrilateral as well. Right, so this statement is false. If we can bond the if we can bond the uh, universe to a um, only only on the triangle, then that statement will be true. But we have quadrilateral here, so it's false. What's the next one? Here we have a bad condition and n. We have two a logic connectivity here, bad condition and conjunction. And we have universal quantifier. And so this in the symbolic notation, it's just um, Sx if and only if Ax and Hx. So we want to write down the uh, conjunction statement first and the SX, then apply the back condition. So if we write down it into an English sentence, we have um, SX, a polygon is a square. And if and only if all of its interior angles are equal, and all of its sides are equal, right? So let's write down the SX first. It's just a polygon. It's a square. And the back condition, if and only if. All of its interior angle uh, equal and we have the conjunction here so it's and and all of its sides are equal What the truth value of this statement? This statement is false, right? Because um, it's only true for a four-sided polygon. But we have triangle in the universe. The triangle is not a four-sided polygon. So, so, so which means the four implication a square, it, uh, if, if the polygon is a square, then the interior angles are equal and all sides are equal. But the backward implication is not true because we have triangle here. Tri we have triangle in the universe. So this statement should be false. That's the question one. It's not too difficult. Let's move on to the question two. The question two states that let P and Q denote the following predicates. The P x y is just x square greater and equal to y. And the Q is x plus two is less than y. And in the universe for each of the x and y consistent of all real numbers, Determine the truth value for each of the following statements. In the last question, all the predicates are unary. But this question, um, there are two binary predicates. So each predicate accept two parameters, x and y. And in the universe, it's on the all real numbers. So 
when you have this kind of question in the exam, you have to uh, calculate the um, value of the x and y, then compare to get the truth value of one statement. Then you combine the statements into a compound statement, then check the truth value, right? So what do we have here? We have P, I guess three, and Q, one, three. So what's a P negative three and eight? It's just negative three square, greater than or equal to eight. It's true, right? And we have the conjunction here, the and. So we need to uh, see the truth value of the second statement. So the second statement, second subproposition is just Q. 1, 3. So we have 1 plus 2 less than 3 here. This one should be false, right? Obviously. So then the whole statement, the P and Q should be false because we know because we know true and false equal false. Right. Then the statement B. Similarly, we need to calculate the uh, equation first. We have we need to derive p one over two and one over three. It's just uh, one over two square greater than equal to one over three. This should be false because one over four is not greater than the greater or equal to the one over three. And we have this junction here is it's or. So although the first sub proposition is false, we have to check the truth value of the second statement. So what's the sub statement we have? Um, not Q negative like two, negative like three here. We first calculated um, Q negative like two, negative like three. It's just like two plus two and less than negative like three. This is zero less than negative like three. It's false, right? But we have negation here. So negation so negate false should be true, right? Which means we have false or true. It's true, right? We have false or true is true. Um, the statement C, we have by condition and negation. Nothing special, just P one two. It's one square equal to large um, greater or equal to two is false. And by condition. If and if not Q one two. What's the value of the Q one two? Q one two is just um, one plus two is less than two. So we have three less than two. It should be false. But we have negation here, right? So not, not false, not false. It's true. So we have false. If and only if true, that will be false because we can only conclude that if true, if and only if true, or false, if and only if false, right? So we have the false, true, false here. The false, true, false for the question two. Yep, that's it.
in the question three, um, we have three predicate here, P, Q, and R. For the Q and R, um, it's, it's obvious, and it's easier to tell um, if the variable X is odd and even, or if the X is um, greater or less than zero. But um, for the predicate PX, it's a quadratic equation. So you have to solve the equation first, right? So it's just use the method that you have the ring has school. So let's see the solution of the quadratic equation. We have PX X squared minus eight X plus 15 equals zero. What do you have here is just X minus five because yeah 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 so then we have x equals three or x equals to five that's a solution to the quadratic equation so um the question asks you to um the object is if the universe for x consistent of all integer determine the choose value for each of the following statement and if the statement is false give a counter example so let's see the hmm, let's have a look at the first statement here we have um, for all x the universal quantifier and in an implication we have px implies qx so what's the px it's the equation and what's the qx it's x is odd so this statement means the solution to the uh, equation px is odd right and as we know as we solve above we know uh, px is just x equal to 3 or x equals to 5 and qx we have is just x is odd then we can tell that the um, this statement is true because uh, 3 is an odd number and 5 is an odd number right so um, what's the next one the next is b and the b is exist x p x implies q x if if the universal quantifier uh, if the universal um quantifier bonded uh, statement is true then the extensional quantifier bonded statement must be true why um, if all the var variable in the universe uh, can make statement to be true then there must exist one right so um, we can tell the statement is true because it's just um, change the it replaced the um, exist uh, 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 it replaced the for all x by a re exist x so this one this this one must be true and for the statement c we have exist Rx uh, exists x, Rx implies Px. So what's the Rx? Rx is x greater than 0, and Px is um, the solution to the quadratic equation. Um, so wh what the statement means? The, the statement means that there exists a positive integer. That is a solution to um, x squared minus 8x plus 15 equals 0, right? And since the solution to this equation of 5 and 3, they are positive. Then the above statement is true. Because x, x is um, a positive integer, and there exists a positive integer that um, can solve the solution. So, this statement is true. Because um, 
I will write it down like px is always has a positive result and the rx is like um, x greater than zero so there exists a um, positive integer that can make the solution uh, correct so let's move to the statement d statement d says um, for all x we have px or qx the compound statement implies they are x so and px or qx means x is either odd or x um, equal to equals to three or five and um, because it's a universal quantifier so but um, all number greater than zero we we can have the um negative odd number right so if you want to if you want to disprove a statement you can raise and counter example and we know this statement is false because we have some like um, a negative odd number right rx is just x equal uh, greater than zero and this is x equals three or five qx is x is odd so if qx is sorry if qx is true i'm right down here if qx is true then which means x is odd in plus x equal uh, x greater than zero but it's false because we have like so we raise a counter example like x equal to negative three x is odd right but it's negative not it's not it's less than zero it's not greater than zero so the fourth statement is false and we have the counter example like x equals to negative three yep here the question four it asks you to write the negation of each of the following statement as an English sentence without the symbolic notation. And here, the universe consists of all the students at the university where Professor Lin Hart teaches. So, um, in this question, we can write the sentence in symbolic notation first. It can help you to understand the um, statement easier so we have like a so let let x represent the um, students students in professor Lenhardt's class and px means and px means um, it's measuring the uh, cover size major in computer measuring i was write the cs for computer science or mathematics math right um we have every here every student every means the universal quantifier so uh, every it's universal quantifier so we have for all x it's the universal quantifier px the negation of for all x px should be exist x not px right we write not exist uh, for all x px we can have like exist x not px it's very simple and in english we can have there exists a student in professor Lenhardt's c++ class who isn't measuring 
um, computer science or mathematics. I will write it down as there exists a student in professors as a learn hard C++ class who is not major in computer science or mathematics right so when you have um, when you have this kind of question in the exam you just write down the symbolic notation for the original statement then uh, apply the negation negate the negate the statement um, the symbolic notation can help you to understand how to negate that so we have B so similarly we read we use the symbolic notation to represent the statement it is um, the statement B is at least one student in Professor and Hart C++ class is a history major so um, we have at least one at least one here means it's an um, extension of 25 so we have exist x and similarly we we, we use the x represent the student in uh, professor's class and like um, i write down like qx qx means um, the student is in history major student is history major so um, we have like um, exist x qx so the next step is negate negate the symbolic form the, the uh, like the statement they have not exist x qx it's just um, for all x not qx right um, then write the statement in the English sentence is just in mm, no student in Professor Linhart's C++ class is a history major so here we have no student in professor the hearts c++ class is a history major right because we have the 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 original statement is the exist qualifier then after that we negate the we negate the existential quantifier we have the universal quantifier and and it's not qx means um no student in the um c plus class is a history major so then we have no student in professor Linhart's c plus class is a history major that's a question four nothing special in the question five it's mm, it just asks you to negate and simplify the statement and you just need to um, be clear that uh, the negation of the universal quantifier is, is the extension quantifier so um, and when you ask to negate and simplify a statement you have two choice so first um, apply the negation first and then simplify the uh, statement or you can simplify the statement first and then negate the uh, statement uh, it depends sometimes uh, you sometimes ne uh, apply the negation first could be easier since um, there may have a negation in the original statement already uh, if you apply the negation you then you have a double negation so you can eliminate the negation so let's have a look at the statement a we have um, a universal quantifier here we have the implication here so negation of the sorry 
linkage of the uh, for x p x in plus q x here it's just uh, it's equivalent to exist x not p x in plus q x so and we know the you, if you want to emit the implication uh, we can we have the not p or q right if p in plus q then um, you can use the rough inference that we got a not p or q so we have what do we have here we have exist x not p oh sorry not p x or q x and then we have to move the indication inside the compound statement so we can eliminate this negate and we will change the um, disjunction to a conjunction and we have applied the neg negation uh, in front of the qx so we have it's equivalent to exist x um, px and sorry sorry about that here is px and not qx right and the statement b here we have existential quantifier and a disjunction implication this one is a little bit um, complex than the first one so similarly we write the negation of exist x px or qx implies r x right um so negation of the existential quantifier we have the for x so it's just sorry just for all x not px or qx implies rx and for all x we have we need to um replace the implication by not and or so we have not not px or qx or rx then put the negation inside we can limit the negation here and we need to change the um, or to an end we have mm, negation here so just it's equivalent to for all x px or qx um, and not rx right so yeah we have for all x px for x px or qx and not rx yeah that's the solution so when you ask to negate and simplify the r statement you just uh, apply negate and simplify and that's very simple yeah sometimes here here as we, um as we can see here we have not and not then the uh by the double negation the dot will disappear but don't um, don't forget to um, change change the um, disjunction or conjunction to a offset types, right? If you imply not to a n or a or, it will be become the offset types. Mm, yeah, that's the question five let's move on to the question six this question asks you to determine the truth value of each statement in the case when the universe compresses of non-zero integers and in the case when the universe consists of all non-zero real numbers so actually uh, we have two questions here so the first question is 
if the universe consists of all non-zero integers, non-zero integers, all non-zero integers. And the second question is, the universe consists of all uh, non-zero real numbers. So we have second question is real numbers. So um, when you have this kind of question in the exam, uh, I suggest you to rewrite the symbolic notation into a English sentence because it can help you understand the uh, meaning of the statement clearly. So let's write down the first statement. What's the first statement statement means? It's there exists a non-zero integer x uh, for all non-zero integer y such that x times y equals to 1. Um, next step is determine the choose value of the statement. So if the statement is true or false, it's false, right? Because um, y can be any value. So when you want to uh, disprove a statement, you can raise a counter example such that um, we have counter example here, let, let y equals 2 and um, we have like um, x is 1 then that x equals to 1 then x y is not equals to 1 right because uh, every um, selection so any selection of uh, x and y should be integers so the for the class oh, sorry for the statement b we have for for all for all for all x there exists a y such that 2x plus 5 equals to 5 2 plus, plus y equals to 5 and x minus 3y equals to minus 8. So we should have for all non zero integer x and non zero integer y. So what the choose the value of this statement? So we have 2x plus y equals to 5. So we know y equals to 5 minus 2x and x minus 3y equals to negative 8. We have um, y equals to x plus 8 over 3. So um, f uh, this statement says for all x, there exists a y, make the condition valid, but it should be false because let's raise um, a counter example like uh, for example, let x equals to um, 2 here, we have y equals to 11 over 3. It's not a integer. Sorry, it's not. It's not a. It's not an integer. Right. So the condition does not meet, which means the statement is false. Let's have a look at the second part. Um, it asks um, in the case of when the universe consists of all all non-zero real numbers. So what do we have here? If we if the universe is all non-zero real numbers, uh, we have zero 
exists a non-zero real numbers a real number x for all non-zero integer y such that x y equals to one and the statement is false why we know this statement is false so we want to disprove the statement and here um if you want to disprove a statement um then so if you want to disprove a existential uh, quantifier then you have to consider all the cases so here for example um if if for all uh, like if for x not equal to not equals to one and one equals to or uh, y equals to one um, the result is a non real number it's non zero real, real number sorry non zero real number and x one equals to x right because y is one but it's not equals to one and if x equals to one then we have y equals two which means x y equals to two not equals to one then we have this through the uh, statement because um in the first case in the first question it asks if the x and y are uh, both integers both non-zero integers uh, you have no choice because the only choice is x equals to one y equals to one but if x and y are non-zero real numbers you can choose like uh, x as mm, one two three and y as one over two like one over three and that will result in a, a re that will have the result of one but um, so so when you want to disprove a statement for the existential quantifier, you have to consider the all the cases. So here is why. And for the statement B, so we have um, for all non-zero integer. Oh, uh, sorry, <laughs> not integer. This time we have real number x there exists a non-zero real number y such that our 2x plus y equals to 5 and x minus 3y equals to minus 8 um, this time we we say we for all x there exists a y right uh, so we have similarly we have 2x plus y equals to 5 uh, y equals to 5 minus 2x and 5 minus 3 y equals to minus 8 y equals to x plus 8 over 3 so this time for any pick of x there will exist a y make the condition valid so the statement is true so so whatever the x you pick we can have a y since the both the x and y are um, real numbers and so for whatever x you choose here is a y then the statement is true so yeah this is a question six so now when you want to disprove a um, universal quantifier so it's just uh, find a funny counter example but if you want to disprove a uh, existential quantifier you have to consider all the cases the question seven asks you to negate and simplify the given statements um, it's similar to the question five but this time we have the multiple quantifiers Mm, so let's have a look at the statement A. 
So it asks you to negate the statement, so we put the not in front of the statement. We have x less than x less than y is z, x less than z, less than, sorry, less than y here. So um, I always eliminate the implication first, then put the negation inside, because when you eliminate the implication, you can have a negation, right? So you can uh, make, so, so the, if there is double negation, then the negation will disappear. So next step is um, we have for x, for y, and not x less than y, sorry, or exist z x z y so next step we have we have to put the negation inside we have exist x exist y the next step is we want to put this negation inside so we have exist x exist y and not not here is not and not so the by the rule of the negation the, the negation will disappear so we have x minus y i'm oh, sorry x less than y and we have uh, we have not here so we need to change the disjunction to a conjunction and put the negation here so we have and not sorry and not and oh um because there is the negation so we need to change the extension quantifier to the universal quantifier so it's just x less than y and uh for all z not x less than z less than y right mm, for all put here and here next step is put the negation inside um but we have two uh light signal here so we need to split in the split the x less than z less than y into two sub sub proposition actually so we have we have exist x exist y x my, uh, less than y and ex, uh, for z uh, not x less than z and z uh, less than y and here is the bracket here cool so next step is put the negation inside so exist x exist y uh, x less than y and for all z um, not 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 x less than z is just x greater than or equal than z or z greater than equal than y right so that's the first statement so what the second statement we have not for x for all y x equals zero and y equals zero implies the x y greater than y no so similarly we mm, we want to limit the implication first we have for x for y x greater zero oh sorry have not here and y zero and zero so here here what is for what's this for yeah here or um, exist as the x, y, equal to z. 
So next step is uh, move the negation inside. So we have hmm, 4x, 4y, x greater than 0, and y greater than 0. And, right, because we have not, and this junction we have to put, uh, replace as the conjunction. So, and we need to do, put uh, negation here. So we have not uh, exist the x, y greater than y, x, the greater than y. Uh, so the next step should be for x, for y, x greater than zero, y greater than zero. And for all that, because not exist is just uh, for all, right? Next step is x, y less than equal than, uh, x, z less than equal than y. So this is the statement B. Let me double check the for here, 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 and here. Yep. How we have negate and simplify the statement. So that's all the explanation about the problem size three. Um, please try solve the question by yourself first. So after that, watch the this video. If you still um, if you're confused or if you have any curious about the problem, just um, come to the uh, office hour and we will help you go through any questions. Thank you.